One of the most important principles of Wing Chun and its descendant arts like Jeet Kune Do is centerline theory. Centerline theory is the idea that there's an imaginary line that runs down the axis of my body and the axis of my opponent's body. The plane that connects these two lines is the center line. Yes, the center line is actually a center plane. I didn't make up the name. The theory states that controlling the center line will allow you to deflect nearly all of your opponent's attacks while quickly delivering your own. And yes, there's other terminology about central lines, mother lines, controlling your opponent's center, and a whole bunch of boxes. But we're going to stick to the most commonly espoused basic outline of the theory, which is that controlling the center line allows you to hit vital areas such as the face, throat, solar plexus, and groin, but your opponent can't hit any of yours. Every lineage seems to have a slightly different take on center line theory, so before you start screaming in the comments about how my terminology is wrong, understand that your lineage might just be an outlier. Unfortunately, no matter the particulars of how you define centerline theory, it's nonsense and it is a useless concept for hand-to-hand. -hand. To understand why centerline theory is a fake, bad way of thinking, let's first understand where it is applicable, which is primarily in weapons combat. Specifically, longsword. If we're longsword fighting, most of my attacks will involve crossing the centerline to some degree. If my opponent's weapon occupies the center line, any attack where my sword crosses that line can't actually hit my opponent. All they have to do is advance their weapon forward to completely stifle my strikes. If I move my weapon down or take my hands off the center line to sneak around their weapon, they can deliver a devastating strike down the center line. Even if they first defend my strike, their weapon is still closer to the center, giving them effective control of the main avenue of attack. Now, this sounds like it completely confirms center line as a valid theory and a good way to fight. However, this concept has virtually no application outside of weapons combat. To understand why, we need to look at the differences between a longsword fight and a fist fight. First of all, punches don't come down the center line. Punches originate from your shoulders, neither of which are on the center line. A strike from my shoulder to my opponent's face is not necessarily going to intersect the center line at all. In longsword, both of my hands are on the weapon, which splits the difference between my shoulders, putting it in the middle of my body, and roughly on the center line. Most of my sword strikes will naturally be pretty close to the center line. My punches, however, will naturally be off of it. This means that my opponent can't just press forward to stifle punches. They have to actually move their hands which is going to constantly force their hands off the center line. In longsword, this doesn't matter because there's no other weapon that can take advantage of that opening. Their only weapon is trapped on the outside. However, in a fist fight, my other hand can quickly exploit that gap they just created. Their ability to counter on the center line is also greatly reduced when compared with weapons combat. When I throw a strike, virtually all of my main center line targets leave the center line, which means that a direct center line attack won't actually hit anything vital. If if a sword strike comes down on my shoulder, I'm as good as dead. However, a punch landing on my shoulder won't even get my attention. And if you defend a strike and then attempt to track my head movement with your counterattack, where are your hands? Not on the center line, that's for sure. It would have been quicker and easier to block an attack if your hands had started off the center line. Finally, the biggest reason that Wing Chun's idea of center line is unrealistic is because constantly controlling the center line isn't even a concept in longsword. I purposely chose to demonstrate a longsword guard that most closely resembles a Wing Chun guard. But the vast majority of longsword guards seem to give very little thought to controlling the center line. This is because the actual lesson of center line is not that you can command it. The lesson is to constantly use footwork to reposition it. If my opponent's weapon is on the center line, they haven't won because I'm not dumb enough to lunge directly at their sword. I'm going to engage them and then use lateral movement to change where the center line is. By taking a quick step, I've now created a new center line that I control. But they are, of course, then going to do the same thing. The center line is not a static fortification. It's an ever-shifting positional advantage that nobody ever keeps for more than a second. And guards so often ignore center line because keeping your weapon that close to your opponent is a terrible way to generate power. And whether I'm attempting to cut through heavy gambeson or crack somebody in the jaw, generating power solely by stepping into your strike often fails to do sufficient damage. Being able to move your arms or swing your weapon is critical in delivering a meaningful strike. And I'm sure some nerd out there is thinking, but boxers keep their hands in front of their face. Isn't that basically the same thing as guarding the center line? No, they don't actually care about the line. Putting your hands in front of your face creates defensive traffic, which means you're occupying the space that your opponent wants to punch through. But this is a very different concept from center line theory. If I put my hands here, I have a perfectly legitimate guard and neither of 
my hands are on the center line. My opponent's punches could reasonably be coming from anywhere, which means I can't guard a single plane. I have to guard a whole three-dimensional area, and my hands can start from pretty much anywhere in that space. You see plenty of combat sports athletes with their hands vaguely in front of their face, but virtually none of them put their hands on a line because putting them on that line makes it difficult to guard the rest of the three-dimensional area. Within unarmed striking, I have only ever seen one single practical application of the centerline concept, and that's to get off of it. Most commonly, it's the idea that you should move your head off the center line when throwing an attack in order to preemptively slip your opponent's counterpunch. It's usually abbreviated with the simple instruction, get your head off line. The only thing any fighter needs to know about the center line is to get off of it. Continuously controlling and advancing on the center line is actually a technical error that can be exploited. If A gets too aggressive and focuses too much on that center line, B can step off the line and catch him with a check hook as he comes in. If you have a different, legitimate use of the center line concept being used in combat sports, put it in the comments below. But for the rest of you, please stop talking about center line theory because you're probably using it wrong. Look at this kid, he's an idiot. I bet that he can't even fight. Cause my Krav Maga skills could totally kill. Only my school does martial arts right.